What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Miltrick Media. I am here with Staten Island comedian Josh Rabin. Josh, how's it going? It's going great. I'm excited to be here. Yes, thank you for coming on the show. So, how long have you been a comedian? When did you first start pursuing a career in comedy? Well, I'd, I'd say I've been like doing it seriously for like about like six or seven months now. Um, but like I've tried like do it I like probably about like sophomore junior year of high school like I, that's when I was like I want to try this out so I did like I did an open mic and it, it was terrible like um I was yeah it, like a bunch of my friends went to an open mic at Beans and Leaves and oh on Forest right yeah yeah and um and yeah I was like mostly going to like to like see like friends there but like I comedy was kind of something I've always like kind of thought about and like, like I would write, but like nothing was ever like too fleshed out. I never memorized anything, but I was like, I just got to, I just, it's the first step just to put your name down. And like, everyone was like really supportive and nice, but like, <laughs> it, was, it was not good. But it, it was, that's just the, that was just the first step. Yeah. That very first open mic. So were you feeling anxious? Were you feeling nervous? Or did you have it planned out? Like you thought, all right, I need to attack this open mic. Like this is the first step. Were you like ready to go filled with adrenaline or were you more nervous? Um, definitely more nervous. I, I'd say I, I'm always nervous every, anytime I get up on stage, but, um, specifically that time, like, cause it, it was just, like, I, I didn't feel like, prepared. like I had stuff, but like, I, I wasn't really prepared and like, it, it was, I just kind of like st stumbled around for like three minutes and I was like, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> but you're and, only 19, right? Yeah, I'm 19. Yeah. Oh, so like, sick. I was probably like 16 the first time I tried. Yeah. And then like. But yeah, the reason why I said I, I'm doing it for like probably more like six months because that's when I was like, okay, I need to take this seriously. I, I like, I'm going to Hop Shop at the table. Uh, I'm going to like into the city for open mics. So like, I, I'm like fully committed to it now. Like, this is like, I'm ready to grind it out. Yeah, no, but that's great. You still did the open mic a couple of years ago. That's mm -hmm. a start as well. Forest Avenue has a couple of great open mics. I remember when I was 19 as well. Like, I did, um, I was playing acoustic guitar. I did an open mic at, I believe, Liberty Tavern. Mm. So that was cool. Yeah, but Beans and Leaves. I didn't even know they had open mics. That's awesome. Well, I, it's, I don't know if they still have one, yeah, but it, yeah. yeah. But like, yeah, I think like, yeah, that was like the one I knew about. Yeah. And now like only like the hop shop's the only one I know about right now. No, but, I gotcha. Yeah. When you prepare for a set, mm -hmm. how do you go through material? Do you have numerous bits pre-recorded via voice memos written down and i'm not a comedian but i love learning more about mm -hmm. the art of comedy how long are your average bits i'd say like right now my bits are about like a minute minute and a half like each individual one because like yeah like right now i'm still early in my career so it's just like it's just you only got like five minutes if you get on stage so it's just like and it's probably it's better to write like when you're starting off just like smaller bits because you just want to get like be like concise and like make sure you're putting forth all the best stuff like you don't want filler. But yeah, when it comes to like writing material, I'd say like just throughout the day, if I ever think of something, I put it in my notes app on my phone. Like I, I use this one note note pad, like not like this one like notes like section in the app and just it's like scrolling for like <laughs> you could like scroll there for like minutes oh you and have just, like one long continuous yeah, just note one, yeah that's what i'm trying to say yeah it's just like one long continuous note that like you just scroll through and just like there <laughs> there's just so much stuff there and then usually by like at night that's when like i i look through like see if anything's actually usable then like i'll try to write like once every night based off of whatever i got on my phone yeah i got you what are your biggest influences as a comedian um I feel like the the big one for basically like anyone around my age is like John Mulaney. Like he's he's the guy right now. He's um yeah, he's just he's the most popular and like even though he's like this huge guy, he still has like super like tight solid material. Like he like he deserves to be there. Um uh Norm Macdonald who he just passed away. Yeah, he's rest like in peace. Mm. Yeah, he he was just sort of like like how like you can get like absurd with comedy like i don't know how to explain it where he just like he sort of like played like a character on stage where just like this mumbling old man who was like confused but like really like it's all like planned like that's like that's what interests me about it yeah um also like mike berbiglia i don't know if you're familiar with him he does like 
it, his like his recent specials he's done have been these sort of like overarching stories where like he, he, he it's interesting that like he kind of like makes like the comedy more feel more impactful like his like last special it was called the new one and it was all about like how he had his first kid how like he didn't want a kid and like it was just really interesting like it was it was impactful it was nice mm-hmm. when you're creating jokes and bits are they inspired by things let's say you're digesting or reading or is it inspired by a lot of firsthand experiences so do you feel that as your life and you're going through experiences you're evolving as a person do you feel that your material is evolving as you age um it's hard to say because like i don't know i still i'm still very new to it like that, that's ultimately the thing like it's it's hard to like look back on like personal experiences when i, I really haven't lived that much yet um but yeah it's usually like small things in my day-to-day life like i don't know like the last thing i wrote like i bought a yo-yo and so I just, hey listen that's yeah. still a thing still yeah a, like, still yeah, experience so, so yeah so it's just like i don't know build off of that and like no one cares that i bought a yo-yo but like i, I care that i bought a yo-yo no, yeah, just yeah. like i don't know just like stuff like that where just what well, whatever like small thing that i think is humorous i I just I put it down, see what I can do with it. So that's so when you think so anything that you find humorous, you try and write it down, get it recorded, and you try and make a bit from there. Yes, yes, that is cool. That's cool. So even before you started with that open mic uh, at Beans and Leaves mm-hmm. in high school, were you performing for friends? Let's say in an impromptu setting in class, in lunch, hanging out. Were you performing for friends and family? Had it and yeah, were you performing for friends and family back in high school? And from there, where your friends like Josh, you're hilarious, you have to do comedy? Um, I don't know. I wouldn't say they were like, you gotta do comedy, but like I was that was definitely something like I kinda like almost pr- like prided myself in. Like mm. I felt like I was good at like getting people to laugh, but like it's funny then like I'm good at like getting my friends to laugh, but I feel like I crumble in like other like certain social scenarios. Like I I was at like work the other day and like it, people are slowly starting to find out that I do comedy there because like I'm starting to post it on my Instagram more. And like people are shocked every time because that like like the version of me at work where I'm just, I'm just like quiet the whole time like I'm not really talking I'm just doing my thing like they, they they don't expect it at all like it's like it's that sort of thing where sometimes like the quiet like the more quiet like less sociable people are the ones willing to get out there yeah sometimes it's hard to separate your work self from let's say your outside side hustle self or your creative self but then sometimes also it's hard to escape that because. It becomes so intertwined. No, but that's cool. Yeah, yeah. It must be like kind of like a trippy. It's like, well, yeah. When you're at work, because you're at work, and it's not always as enjoyable. You just want to work to pursue, let's say, comedy or music. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you know, you'd rather not be. I'd rather not be at work, right? Yeah, like, it's. What was I gonna say? It's yeah. a drag sometimes. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but it, the thing that happens when people start finding out you're a comedian, they're like, "Oh, I bet you have tons of material on me." I was like, no, oh, they not. say that? Yeah, they're like, oh, yeah, I bet you could write pages about me. And I was like, no. <laughs> like, yeah, like, have, have people at work ever been like, hey, Josh, crack a joke? Yeah, then I gotta be like, no, it's, oh, it's, it's, have, it's, not, it's not like yeah, that. You, like, can't, you can't just be, I can't just pull out my five minutes. Like, it, it's awkward if I start yeah. doing that. Yeah, yeah, it's an art. It's an art. Well, I remember a couple weeks ago, you start, you have been posting more on social media, mm-hmm. TikTok and Instagram. And TikTok I saw I thought was really funny was YouTube Minecrafter. <laughs> so let's talk about that bit. What inspired that bit? And you performed at the Broadway Comedy Club that bit, and I mm-hmm. saw it was on TikTok. That was funny. Let's dive into that bit. Uh yeah, it was just basically, I don't know, I had dreams of becoming like a YouTuber. I feel like a lot of like kids my age have. Cause like YouTube's just such a big part of like your life growing up kind of at my age where I don't know, and then so you're like you see like these like random people playing Minecraft, and I was like, I could do that even though I'm like 12. And I was like, then no one wants to hear. Like I'm thinking like oh, I'm, I could become big and famous. I just gotta keep working at this. But like I have no concept of like what what am I supposed to do to be funny? Like how to make a properly edited video? So it's just it turns into like these super long videos of me talking with like the worst microphone you've ever heard super high-pitched voice and it's like i get like five views hey listen that may, those five I, views count i got like a like i think it was myself like it's not it yeah 
but like but like all my friends d- did it too like it, i don't really talk about that that much where like we um we had like a collective we were gamers nation that's sick <laughs> yeah and, and we're we all like uploaded to like this like collaborative channel and it was just all the same thing it was like playing minecraft today and Yo, it was like i'm playing minecraft I- i'm with my boy <laughs> i had the same thing with xbox live back because I grew up with YouTube too. I remember YouTube without the ads. It was the Wild West. The mm-hmm. first few, I remember the PS3 song when that went viral and the fray was the soundtrack to that song. I remember this SpongeBob video went viral called like Grandma's Kisses. Um, I know Grandma's Kisses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my wow, God. Wow, what, what a time. What a time. That was like 2007. But I remember back when I played Xbox 360 with friends from mm-hmm. school, we had our own clan. We had our own Call of Duty clan. We were like, the hitman clan or whatever <laughs> and we thought we were the shit and we would go and play we would binge call of duty every day after school it was the best of times and yeah it's just like that it was fun but yeah a lot you could even do stuff like that with twitch if you wanted mm-hmm. like that could be lucrative as well this video game like, was like pov videos on with youtube yeah, yeah, yeah i yeah i definitely i still love like playing video games and stuff but like i don't know if i were to i de- something youtube is definitely something i want to get back into like it, pro- not like gaming. I'm not going back to my roots of Minecraft videos, but you like want to focus on let's say content creation. On yeah, YouTube. yeah. I think yeah. I think that's definitely like a big thing you kind of need to do when like you're trying to sort of come up as a comedian. Kind of like I think you should be putting yourself out there. Like I feel like a lot of comedians. I'm seeing them like I'm seeing them make like TikToks and stuff, but I, I, they they feel very like thrown together sometimes like not like properly like written out like scripts or anything like they have talent but they're just kind of doing it because they're they're just it's sort of like they're just clocking in yeah let's talk about social media though in comedy a lot of times i've heard posts on everything and then i've heard from other people people i've tried learning from mentors you could stick to one or two platforms and get great with that you with your creative career which social media platform do you currently feel most comfortable using to promote your work? Um, I'd say probably TikTok's the easiest. Like, I, I'll, get, I'll get back, like, a video of my set, and then I could just chop that up, and that's, like, a, like, that could be, like, nine or ten videos, like, depending on how much, how far I stretch it out. Um, and like I said, like, YouTube is something I want to do more, like, I want to, like, properly write out sketches it's also just a matter of like doing it and like getting some friends together but like yeah i'd say like tiktok's the the easiest and most convenient instagram's good for too for like if you're trying to like promote shows and stuff like instagram's good like a sort of like hub for everything else to kind of show what else you're working on yeah no it is true do you like focusing on 30 second content minute content or 15 second content um yeah like my my TikTok stuff is usually just like, like a minute, like bit or something. But then, like I said, I'm trying to focus more on doing, uh, doing YouTube stuff, which I, I want to be longer form, like five minutes or even more, depending on what I end up doing. Yeah. Yeah. Like when it comes to longer form videos, do you want to get into sketch comedy, like creating your own mini sitcom episodes mm-hmm. or characters? Uh, definitely yeah, more of a sketch thing. I don't know about like a, I don't know not like a long form series. Well, I don't, you never know with those sorts of things It's whatever gets success. But yeah, me sort of like s- sketch ideas. And then if I come up with a more sort of show thing, like a big thing right now is like man on the street stuff, you know, like I don't know if you're familiar with like channel five, that YouTube channel or like, it was kind of like the first third person people have the microphones and they're filming and they do impromptu side stuff talks the the other oh side yeah, talk. yeah yeah okay, that that's it yeah of, yeah of course of course um but yeah like maybe some like version of that because i feel like a lot of people are just doing that thing so i want to find my unique kind of niche i could uh get myself in with there but yeah a lot of it's like it you don't know until you start doing it and, and yeah, yeah that's the beauty with content creation that it's like you could do so many things and you could try so many angles and you never know what may bring more engagement, what may pop off, it could go viral. Yeah, a lot of stuff like that, that's big too. And depending on the content, a lot of it works and it helps you grow organically because the content's engaging, it's quick and to the point and it just ropes people in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, but that's cool. So you'd want to maybe do some sketch comedy stuff on YouTube. In terms of, you've performed at Broadway Comedy Club recently, you've performed at the Table Open Mic. So let's talk mm-hmm. about your performances at in Manhattan, what I just put, I mm-hmm. Broadway 
Comedy Club, right? Broadway Comedy Club. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I just forgot it for a quick sec. So yeah, let's talk about your performances at Broadway Comedy Club. When did you first start performing at that venue? Um, well, it's sort of like a, there's sort of like more audition sort of things where like, oh, uh, gosh, gosh. yeah. So um, basically, you like sign up like through. It's called like the industry room, and like you sign up, you and then you schedule like a date for a show, and then you end up bringing like a certain amount of people and that's what gets you the spot but like it's basically a lot of other comedians doing that exact same thing where it's just like a series of like five minute sets and they're we're all like sort of like competing against each other so it that that sort of environment's really interesting um but yeah uh <laughs> no all good no that's cool so you sign up through basically yeah. this app there's different slots you could sign up for, possibly days. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so nice. That's it, cool. You like get in contact with like the booker of the club, and then he he like schedules you for a date, and then it's like it's like a real deal show. Like it, it's a it's a packed house. Like there there's hundreds of people there, and like it, it's like being able to get in front of like that many people is like it's a, it's exciting. It's the sort of stuff that like makes you keep doing it. Like yeah. <laughs> like it, it's like like comedy's really like an addiction where it's um. You just like you get this high because you get laughs and you're like, I need more, I need more, and then you you start spiraling. You're always just like chasing that kind of like high of getting laughs. It sounds exhilarating, yeah. Similar to other kinds of performing, let's say performing music, but that's cool. So and that's in Manhattan, the Broadway Comedy Club. We're in Lower Manhattan. Uh, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. That's cool. Well, especially with comedians and podcasting in general, became huge. Are you interested in podcasting? Possibly creating your own podcast in the future? Um, I don't know because like it feels like the the situation has to be right. Kind of like it could be like a future thing I expand into, but I don't know. Right now, it's not really something I, I'm looking to get into. Like I, I like another thing I, I've written about before is like I feel like like some people are just starting podcasts when they shouldn't. Like it's just like like their friends think they're funny. And they're like, we got to get people got to see this. But, but like, they, there's no like structure or like anything like worth actually watching. Like, this is great. Like, this is really good. I, I mean, oh, I, enjoy, I enjoy this podcast. I've seen a few episodes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. But, um, yeah. So, a lot of times with comedians, yeah, especially in the comedy world, yeah, podcasts have blew up. Do you think that people and comedians, they can have a successful career without having a podcast? I've seen um, a lot of times like the podcast has helped move tickets. Hmm. Um, it just but yeah, they can, right? Yeah, it just depends on like if that's just the avenue you take to build your to build up yourself. Like, because like I'm saying, I'm kind of trying to use the YouTube TikTok side of things, and that's cool. Yeah, well, yeah, it just like it just depends on like what you value more, and if you whatever whatever you think you could uh, ship the best product with. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. gotcha gotcha you know yeah that's cool do you also in the future want to get involved with let's say network television would you want to be on a sitcom or be a comedic actor or do you want to focus on staying independent with your comedy and just going all in with performance and content creation um yeah it's all like it, a lot of it's just like whatever arises like if if the situation comes up where like that could be my first big break like i feel like i'd be stupid not to take it but like, like right now, I definitely enjoy the sort of like, like I feel like there's a lot of like art and craft in stand up, and like that's something I really want to build. Like I, I want to make it to the top with that sort of thing. But like if if just like like I've said before, like it just it's you never know what the hell is going to happen. Like you you got to just stick around and see what happens next. No, for sure. Have you done any other kind of acting? Like I know you have sites like backstage where you could get in productions and perform. Um. I'd say in like middle school, I had a bit of a theater kid phase kind of thing. Oh, nice, nice. I, I was a uh, I was Rooster in the hit show Annie. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I was I was the villain there. Um, I don't. I think that's about it for for notable. <laughs> um, Do you got any uh, Annie or Rooster bits in 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 uh, in the works for us? No, oh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, I maybe I, I had like I remember I had this like shitty drawn on mustache and like oh, nice. it, it, it was funny and like I was like like I'm kind of short right now, but I was just like a, a really short kid with like and I, I was just I don't know I looked ridiculous. It, it was funny. I think I had my hair parted like uh, like down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> with performing stand up comedy, 
top of your bucket list, where is one place you would love to perform above all else? A certain venue or a state or country? Uh, let's see. I, I don't know if I have. You a... can take your time if not, no worries. I don't know. It's hard to say if there's like a specific venue, mm -hmm. but like I think like a place I, I'd like to like kind of make it to like SNL maybe one day where like nice, that's, nice. that's not really a specific like performance, but like no, nah, that, that works for sure. Yeah, yeah, I think like a common like like starting like comedian goals like maybe one day I'll make it to SNL. That's cool. But like you, you never, but like yeah, it's hard to tell like what what'll happen and yeah, just you got to get lucky. Yeah, no, for sure. Are your fam is your parents big into stand up comedy as well? Are they big comedy fans? Um, I wouldn't say like big comedy fans, but like they, they appreciate it. They're like supportive in what I'm doing. Um, I feel like often I like I run bits by my dad. Like I'll write something at like he'll kind of get like the first draft of it. That's cool. And so then, you're close enough where you bounce some material off him and he gives you some mm -hmm. critique. That's nice. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. That is pretty cool. Being a creative in 2022, especially when you're, when you're pursuing music or stand-up comedy, do you think that you need to also focus on the entrepreneurial and business aspect of the industry in order to stay afloat? Um, I think a lot of that goes into the kind of growing yourself and with your social media presence. Uh, I think networking is definitely a big thing, but like I, that's something I kind of struggle with. Like it's hard, it's hard to like kind of put myself out there like that. Um, like I'll end up like going open mics, but I just end up kind of like staying quiet to myself. But like, I think yeah, what you should, what really should be done is like you just like introduce yourself to new people because that's when the opportunities arise. Like, because it in theory, like this sort of stuff is a lot of luck, but really like sort of like stand or like really anything, any sort of performing thing, it's about like getting as many opportunities as you can because one of them is bound to stick. Like you yeah. gotta. Yeah, you just got to get as many opportunities out there. And then that's when you, you'll eventually, if you're good enough, you'll get your break. For sure. Yeah, and now, especially the last couple of years, the explosion of TikTok. And now you have Instagram Reels has blown up. You have YouTube Shorts, Facebook Reels. A lot of short form video content has blown up. How do you think that has affected comedy and creating comedic content? The age of TikTok. Um... Yeah, I, it's a it's great for being able to like just get your clips out there. Like I think a lot what a lot of people do is like they'll make longer form content and then chop it up for TikTok and like like podcasts are a great example where like they they just get their funny funniest bits out there. Um, <laughs> I lost the train of thought. Nah, it's all good. Yeah, take uh, your time. All good. But yeah, it's I think. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. How do you think the age of TikTok has affected stand-up comedy and creating comedic content? That rise of short-form content over all else. Um, yeah, I say it's great for like just getting your clips out there, just like, get your just break it down to your funniest bits, and that's when you could start growing your own audience. Um, I think a lot of pe people like they think like it's definitely a great way to grow your platform. But I think people understand that they they gotta like put still put a lot of effort in, even though it's just like these yeah. short little quick things. Like sometimes you could like get like tons of views on like your worst like what something you threw together in like five seconds. Yeah. But um, I think people need to understand that like the content you gotta like ask yourself when you make content: Is this something I want to watch? Because like you're like you're making this scene like if you're into like music or stand up or whatever it's like you obviously have some sort of taste for it but like if you what you're putting out you don't like then like you need to change something you need to put more effort in just make it something you want to watch yourself that is a great point is it something you want to watch the importance of knowing your niche that mm -hmm. is a great point yeah Let's talk about touring. What are your mm -hmm. biggest aspirations for touring? Do you want to hit the road above all else? Or for now, do you want to just stay in New York, stay local, and just hone your craft and material? Um, I feel, I, it feels like touring is something that like is so like far in the future for me yet. Because like I said, like it, I'm still like very new to the whole thing. But um, 
Would you love to tour though? Yeah, I pro- I w- yeah, I definitely would. Yeah, if I if I'd be able to, but it's just it's it's hard to know like if I'll even make it to that point. Like it's just I gotta take it one step at a time for now. Yeah, not for sure. That's cool though. Let's see what else. Are- you talked about how a big influence of yours was John Mulaney. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What other comedic influences? were really relevant to you that really made you want to perform stand-up comedy any other um more recently uh, uh james acaster he's a he's a british comedian he he came out with like this uh four-part special uh on netflix called uh repertoire and it, it's like it's probably it definitely opened up some like opened up my eyes for me a bit where like you could make it sort of like you could be more like kind of cartoony and out there with it like a lot of his stuff is just like ridiculous hypothetical scenarios. Like he has a, this one bit. I'm obviously gonna butcher it, but like he says he loves punch and like sort of like those punch bowls at parties. And so he has one set up in the corner of his room, and he just every morning he drinks out of that. And then he he um, the bit and he doesn't have to worry about anyone spiking it unless yeah. it's Crazy Tuesday. <laughs> and then he spikes it himself. Um. It's called what repertoire on Netflix. Yeah, repertoire. It's like it's a four part series, um, and like it, it's like it's so interesting because then like the bits like there are callbacks to like previous specials. Like it's like really crazy stuff where like this whole it's really it's like this giant like four hour body of work, and it's like oh, okay. it's it's really interesting how like he manages to like because it's all like these like crazy ridiculous stories but like he brings it all together between each special and then ties it all back to at the end like that's cool that sounds cool i gotta look it up you definitely should it's really interesting growing up what were your favorite tv shows and movies uh let's see yeah growing up i i feel like i was never like i i watched like I like the iCarly drake and josh like those were the big like sitcoms for yeah 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 um but I feel like I really did just like mostly watch YouTube, which is kind of interesting. Like, it, since it was, a young age, you were into yes, watching YouTube content. Yeah, because it, it's that like, it's it's a, it's a very interesting. It's all really interesting because you could like learn so much, but also like like there's so much you could see on there. Yeah, it, it's so it's also interesting to me. Like more recently, whenever I watch YouTube, like it's always like these crazy like hour two hour videos like. I watched this video recently. It was about like the history of fast passes on like about in Disney. I, oh, in amusement parks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it. Shout out the fast pass. I did that once when I went in 2010. It was amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it's just, yeah. It was just like this crazy two hour video about the history of the fast pass and like there are like certain documentaries, but like you can't get that like certain charm and like that sort of stuff from. You can only get that from YouTube. That yeah. like self made sort of stuff. Broadcast yourself. Yeah, <laughs> the old the classic slogan. I used to watch POV roller coaster videos on YouTube. Oh. <laughs> I remember, like, when I was younger, before I go to six, I was just watching roller coaster videos, and it was amazing. I would watch POV gameplay videos of like Halo and Call of Duty, because, like I said, I used to be in an Xbox. Watching those clan. roller coaster videos with like your hands up, like, oh my god. Yeah, it's like <laughs> I'm getting ready for this. Yeah, I <laughs> I'm can't. I'm in wait. it. <laughs> I'm in it. I'm in it right now. I can't wait. It's going King Dakar. <laughs> I remember I went on King Dakar twice in a row last time. I went to Six Flags in 2010. Uh, that'll make you throw up. <laughs> now I'm upset that it's been nearly 12 years. I got to get back there. I want to throw up, dude. <laughs> now I'm playing. <laughs> got to feel something. You got to feel something. Yeah. What, what a time. You got to feel something. But yeah, like I used to watch that too because I used to play Call of Duty. We would go mm-hmm. hard with friends. You know, yeah, like yeah. we were in g- the gamer tags, the clans, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. I think my. My thing was like Prophet X something, <laughs> some real 12 year old shit, but it was fun as hell. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was Ace. You were Ace? Yeah. yeah. That's like a good mercenary name. Yeah. Well, then. Remember that I, game, Mercenary? I, I, was t- I was taking names on Call of Duty, so I got to be Ace, you know? I played a little bit of Minecraft with my cousin, like a couple, like over the last couple of years, but not mm-hmm. really, like only once or twice. And I've had trouble getting into it. And I feel mm-hmm. bad because it's like, it's this huge phenomenon, like stuff like that and Fortnite. And like, I can't get into it. <laughs> and it's like, Ah, you know what I mean? But it looks cool. Like, I, it makes me want to kind of dive back into it one of these days. It seems mm-hmm. cool. But yeah, like, growing up watching more, let's say, YouTube content. Yeah, because you're 19, right? Yeah. It's, it's amazing how YouTube has evolved. It went from, like, st- I remember watching videos when I was in grade school, the late 2000s. It was so, it was, like, it was raw. It was kind of punk in a way, like, the way it was doing sure, it yeah. yourself. Mm-hmm. The videos created, and then it became, like, 
this huge database. It could be for anything, entertainment, education. You learn so much on YouTube. You mm-hmm. may not even need school. It's like yeah. you can learn so much great shit on YouTube. Yeah, some of the like the more interesting stuff like that really like intrigues me is when like you find like vi- like a video or like even like something in some cases like a someone's like Spotify or something that's like they're just making music or making videos and it's like they're almost like in their own little bubble. Like that sort of stuff interests me. Like like I, like there's like this one like viral video on YouTube where it's just like this guy's like I'm going to teach you how to cook a hot dog and it's like but like his house is a mess like like I, I don't, there's no good way I could like put it into words, but like just watching, like it's in some cases you just get like a, like a little like, like fly on the wall sort of scenario where you get to look into people's lives and it's like so interesting. Yeah, you're right. It is. It's very interesting. What about favorite movies? What were your favorite movies growing up? Um, I remember, uh, at like a fairly young age, my dad showed me the matrix and that, that movie is sick. I just watched the original Matrix for the first time two weeks ago. Oh, my God. I was it's, slacking. It's an it's insane amazing. movie. Yeah. And the graphics were back then for 1999. Yeah, those yeah graphics it's certainly were impressive. Trippy. So <laughs> that was a big movie for you growing up, The Matrix? Yeah, that was probably like my, my big movie for a while. I was like, this is my favorite. And then, but like probably more recently, same with like kind of music too, where like I, I've, I've done like deeper dives into like sort of like lesser known stuff that are like are considered like incredible pieces of art and it's just it's really interesting like what people are capable of and like there's more than just kind of what's like sort of fed to you at face value like more than just like what's on the radio or like the the biggest like blockbuster movies like the mainstream outlets there's a lot beneath the surface which is mm-hmm. cool when you dive into it yeah like a big movie i love growing up was like war of the worlds the 2005 version like certain comedic movies like super bad i remember yeah. during the pandemic i discovered some independent movies like Reservoir Dogs. That was a great movie. Oh, yeah, that was a great movie. Yeah. What about music? What was your favorite music growing up? Favorite artists? Uh, I felt like for a while, I was just like, I didn't really have like, I, I was never really, I, I was like a band kid for a while. Like ever since elementary school to like high school, I was super into band. But, uh, but like for a while, I felt like I wasn't even like listening to music. Like I, I kind of liked the Beatles, but like that was about it. But nice, I was nice. like, my head, I was like super like, closed-minded about it i was like rap is crap and like yeah like that sort of stuff where like i i didn't have like a pre an appreciation for like the art of certain things but, like nowadays i listen to like a lot of uh a lot of hip-hop a lot of like electronic music uh nice yeah i i try to sit, stay diversified in like the media i consume yeah no me as well as i got older especially through high school college like i started appreciating and loving so many more genres when i was younger all i really listen to when I was younger, younger, was like, let's say classic rock or some rock music that my parents listened to because I didn't know any better. I didn't have like a Spotify. We didn't have, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I'll try and sneak on a Napster a little bit sometimes. My dad's <laughs> Napster and check out some new music. You know what I mean? <laughs> Remember we had LimeWire, the good old days, but like I was always told if you go on LimeWire, you're going to get bugs in your computer and you'll be done forever. Yeah, I was, so I, I was like, ooh, I got scared. I was like, I didn't get to make the most of the LimeWire days because I thought that the computer would just crash, which uh, I, maybe it would have. I was, yeah, I, I would, I kind of missed the LimeWire days, but like, <laughs> it's funny hearing stories about that stuff where like you download it and then you get like, yeah, you, you download looking for like a song and then you get like Soldier Boy, <laughs> like you, yeah, you never you crank that Soldier Boy, that ringtone, just that, that was the, that was the <laughs> biggest bop. That was the biggest bop back then. Did Dang. you even get to buy CDs? Like, because I remember I, I was late. I would like. Go, I would go to Best Buy in the late 2000s. I would drag my aunt with me because I just wanted to buy CDs and waste my money on CDs. Not, it's waste, not wasting money, but like mm-hmm. you didn't even need them. You had iPods. You had like yeah, shit like yeah. that. Did you buy any CDs growing up or that was kind of like even past you? Not really. It's just like mostly just like streaming and then like yeah. there's YouTube. And uh, I mean, more recently, I've gone into like collecting like vinyls and records. Like Oh, nice. So you're collecting vinyl cards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So you have what kind of record player do you have? I need recommendations. I I, I don't have a good one. I I have just like something I got on Amazon, but like I need like a, I don't have a proper setup. I, that, I know that's like a sin, but I, I need to get better <laughs> about that sort of thing. It's all good. People that I know, yeah. Some people are like you need the setup. What are you doing? Like, don't even touch the vinyl anymore. <laughs> I mean that they're right, but like I'm like I want to play it right now. Like, <laughs> listen, that's cool. That's really cool that you're collecting vinyl. And everything. Yeah, doesn't mm-hmm. matter. What do you think caused the vinyl resurgence? Um, just like nostalgia and wanting to like, uh, also just like the the physicality of it. 
like I I like being able to like look at my favorite records and then just like seeing it, opening them up and just like it's a it's more of like a a process like to listen to music sort of like a ritual instead of like just going on Spotify and hitting the first thing you see. That's a good point. Yeah, it's more of a cohesive process. You really mm-hmm. get to like be a part of the record, the whole album. Do you like looking at the lyrics when you're listening to the album? Do you pay attention mm-hmm. to that? Um, just open some- up the booklet and just. Sometimes, yeah, I, I I like the art that's usually all in it. It's nice. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. So moving on with twenty twenty two, the year moving forward. What are your plans for the year? Um, it's it's really just more of the same. Just keep like grinding it out. Just keep going open mics and just like improving myself as a as a comedian. Because that it just a lot of it's just practice, and it has, it's it's gonna make sure I keep practicing the right way, and then. I'll be able to improve and then I just kind of got to see what happens while like what opportunities arise while I go on. Like I, I don't want to plan too much because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. What upcoming shows do you have for 2022? What can you let us know? Promote your shows. Let us know when you're playing next. Uh, right now, there's just a there's a show on the 27th, January. Um, but other than that, that's really it. I think the big thing for just like promotion you gotta just you know uh yeah i have a show january 27th at broadway comedy club but i think most more importantly i think if you want to know more about what's going on with me follow me on instagram tiktok maybe subscribe to my youtube if i decide to do something with that but yeah yeah, yeah. i just i think i gotta yeah i want to focus on growing my social media Awesome. Yeah, let us know your social media handles on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. Um, I think it's josh.raven on basically everything. Yeah, it's on Instagram and TikTok, and I think I'm just Josh Raven on YouTube. Josh Raven on YouTube, yeah. yeah. So, biggest aspirations as a comedian, what do you want next for your career? Like, what do you want to be the biggest comedian in the world? What do you want to accomplish this year above all else? Uh, it, it's hard to say just for this year, because it... Um, but like, yeah, I just want to kind of like feel like I just want to feel like I've improved in some way. Like, it's kind of hard to stand up to know, like when you've kind like it's not like there's numbers or like there's any like clear evidence that you've grown. But like, I just want to feel like like maybe just like be able to like look back back at my older stuff and be like, I've grown so much. I just want to feel like I'm all the work I'm putting in is worth it. Gotcha. So growth. Yeah, you want to be able to. Go back and see that personal growth. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, definitely. For sure. No, that sounds exciting. Sounds like you're going to have a great year ahead of you. Mm-hmm. And the performing, the content, keep pumping out the content. Yeah, the bits were entertaining. It was funny. <laughs> and yeah, the new shows at Broadway Comedy Club on January 27th is your upcoming show, right? Yes. Nice. And you can catch Josh also at stand-ups at open mics across the island. He's performed that table open mic. Um, and yes, he has an upcoming show at Broadway Comedy Club. Be sure to follow his socials, josh.raven on Instagram and TikTok. He'll be posting new content. And yeah, any last thing you'd like to tell the audience promoting any projects, let us know. Um, yeah, I don't think there's much more to add. Just follow me on socials and I'm, I'm glad to have been a part of this. Yes, thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Be sure to check out and follow Josh on all social media platforms. Be on the lookout for his content and shows. Thank you for checking out another episode of Miltrick Media. I am your host, Miltrick, and we will see you soon.